Hello, everybody. This is the Lifestream.net podcast of Crisis Core, which is done by uh, Pixel, who unfortunately can't be with us right now because he's asleep. So we decided to soldier on uh, without him for now. I'm Tim. I'm joined by Glenn and Carly, and this is the very beginning of Crisis Core. Pixel said so cute and he's asleep, right? Yes. He's just a quitty baby. He's all tucked in. We made sure he was tucked in, folks. Like, uh, if anyone on the forum knows, Trust is not exactly a fan of this game. <laughs> now, what would you, what would but, you say that? But, <laughs> Glenn, you love this game and everything about it and its extremely overused environments and kind of shitty plot points in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, will say, I will say that this game is um, very strong to start and very strong to end. Yeah. But and then it goes... The middle is not... Then it takes a va- well, the thing is the game takes a vacation. I thought the credits it- were nice. The credits are very well done. I also like the way that they do the on media res and then also the um because this is a yeah. yeah 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 it's totally a callback to the original yeah. right here but it, yeah. I very much like this scene. It is pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know, it kind of loses its coolness once you find out that it's not real, but... Yeah. Oh, no, you spoiled the next five mi- minutes for us. I mean, come on. But no, I mean... Eliminate them and regain control of the train. It's not what, real. What would have been nice is, um, leave this bit as just a simulator training. But later on, actually have them have to do this mission for real... Yeah, and it like goes horribly wrong for him. They got close to that at one point, but that could have been cool. Actually. Yeah, because you know that's always nice Focus. in a, in a narrative to have that callback no to something on from the beginning. Understood. And, you know, it just makes you feel cozy in the narrative. Yeah, and and really, you never get to feel cozy in this narrative. Hello to you too. It really is. Part of it is the fact that they're trying to condense what is a. I mean, it's it's actually all told. It turns out to be three years, not including the gaps. But it is about three years worth of narrative spread out over about five, six years. I think it might be closer to nine. Uh, total, because. No, no, I guess you're right. It's it's six to seven. It depends I, on. Yeah. I thought it was seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah. yeah. It is seven. Um. Like three years if you wasn't trapped in the evil time. Yeah. And four, I think. It's um. I think it's two and a half years pre Nibelheim. Four years in the tubes, and then about half a year on the run. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't, you know, I can never remember if he's supposed to be 15 or 16. Uh, 16. Is it 16? Because he dies when he's 23. Yeah, so. Spoiler alert for anyone that doesn't Oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> he doesn't make die. it out of this game alive. <laughs> Okay, it was Eris that's 15 and then she yeah. introduced. That's what I think I know. Also, yeah, boy, the <laughs> uh, three of the main characters from, from this game are either dead in Final Fantasy VII or will die in Final Fantasy VII. One of them killing the other. <laughs> I wonder who those people could be. I wouldn't now. even call Cloud a main character in this kill? game. Why are we I didn't say Cloud. Troops? It's not. It's not a main character in this game. It's not a supporting character. Above. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call um. Sassy Poo a main character either. I mean, he's a major character, but he. Yeah. I, I would call the main characters of this game, for good or for ill, Zack, Aerith, Genesis, and Angel. Which is actually, Sephiroth probably could have been in this more and it would have helped. Because we would have given more of a shit about what it cares about its friends. Should have been Sephiroth instead of Genesis. Yeah. 
Should have been anyone instead of Genesis. <laughs> no, could no. Have been, could, could have been a share instead of Genesis. Okay, so the villain of Crisis Core is now a cat to our. Yes. That would have been interesting. Okay. Yep. I mean, you've all you've all seen the uh, Sephiroth X Cactuar love poetry, right? I'll make yes. first in no time. Go up the stairs at the end of the platform. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm just gonna got it. throw it out there in this last play. There's gonna be a lot of fangirling from me about Zack. Mm. There's gonna be a lot of fangirling about Zack's ass. Oh, yes. uh, Everything about Zack. His Buster sword. And, and I can hear uh, Tessa's approval. Yeah, that's what that is. That's what you're hearing. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I mean, you approve of Zack. It's just the rest of this game that you don't like. <laughs> I mean, Zack is a, Zach himself is fine. Yeah, yeah no, Zack's a great character. It's just that it's a shame that his story is in a very bad... So, I, I've said this before, but I find that there is a difference between a bad story and a badly told story. Yeah, and that's a good point. Yeah, Zack has a good story. He is in a bat. It is just very badly told. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna focus more on the Wu Tai War, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, get us more of him spending time with Eric. I know this. It's weird, but that is one of his most humanizing elements. Yeah. Is the girlfriend, and but we need more of Zack the person rather than Zack wanting to be the hero. Yeah. And. Part of this game was trying to set up, and then it wanted to set up, you know, Sephiroth, the great person who falls due to feeling isolated and alone and better, but also apart from everybody. Showing your back to the enemy. But they didn't go full enough on that, and we also didn't get enough of Zack. Yeah, no, I know that I sounds think... weird because he's the main character, but no, I, I totally agree. It doesn't feel like Zack's story, really. It's He's he's a uh, he's a passenger. Yeah. In, in you know what? This is all like Final Fantasy X. This is Yuna's story. <laughs> um, it's it's really it's Genesis' story, really. Yeah. And he's not um, interesting enough for or at all. <laughs> I mean, he could say he at all, he could've, but he could have been a very interesting character. But he was not. He he was not handled well, and I don't know if that was Gak's fault or Nomura's. Like, but there was basically a problem with the way he was handled. Too much talking about Loveless for one. Uh, <laughs> that's what, that's what, started, what Genesis's damage is. There was yeah. a problem with how he was handled. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go back to what you were saying. Okay, I have had a question about this scene. How exactly does Zack sword break when the, the sword is real and everything else is not? What? The um, sword he's using yeah. is broken, but how did it break? Well, they're like... Uh, Holodeck. Yeah, they're like hard light constructs, so... No, but the sword, just, just look at it now. This, his sword is real. Everything else is not. Like, and Jill gives the sword back to him, the Why? broken sword. Mm -hmm. So how did it break? Because hey, he, he, you serious? Because he was he was fighting something with solid substance. I was just getting warmed up. He chipped it on the wall. Let's just call it that. <laughs> also, that really makes the sword. I don't know why, but the way he was, uh, that pommel makes that sword look so much like a baseball bat. Which is hilarious, because I've always wanted... I mean, granted, there's Earthbound, but I've, I've always wanted to have an RPG where the hero... Oh. <laughs> uh, just uses mundane if weapons. You want to be a hero, you need to oh, Cloud has a bat with a nail in it. Yeah. Like honor. To be a man, you must have honor. Honor and a penis. Mm. Anyway, sorry. Mm. Had to get that one out. I, I will also warn that... Uh, they, from this point on, every single time someone says honor, I'm just gonna imitate uh, Suko. Well, not Suko. <laughs> the parody of Suko in Ember Island Players. He says, Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Delete! That would have been the best thing. Nah. I mean, 
it's it's still an entertaining game, and I love sex. Yeah. So, uh, entertainment isn't supposed to hurt me. Yes, it is. <laughs> Our entertainment is supposed to hurt you. Well, so mission accomplished. Yep. Can you or, me? Sorry to quote Stephen Colbert, misery training, accomplished. <laughs> assignments ah, Kunzel. Right me out to dry. And <laughs> why is he wearing that inside? Because they couldn't be bothered to give Zack's other best friend an actual character model. Because that would have taken more effort, and that was one of the other big problems of this game. So many good ideas, and no effort put at them. 300 mission system! Great idea! Give us more than four maps. <laughs> yeah, it's just for oh, Sorry, sorry, five maps. What, if you count the one with Minerva? No, 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 no. The, the fifth map is the frickin' unique boat map. Oh, right, I forgot about that one. Yeah. That, that, that's the, there, that just illustrates the issue. Yeah. I forgot about that one. <laughs> if, if it wasn't for the fact that they basically all had the exact same um, assets and layouts, it wouldn't be so bad. But literally, it's the exact same you know, maps with slightly different areas with, you can't go here. It's good to finally meet you. It kind of reminds me of, uh, you guys know Soul Calibur Legend? Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, basically the same issue there, only, only that wasn't the side missions. Those were the, the, the actual story yeah. uh, missions. They were basically all the same. Like Soldier that. First Class. Genesis. But that whole game was a fucking disaster. Month ago. <laughs> a lot of Soul Calibur games have been disasters. I say that loving several games in that series, but like Soul Calibur Five, like I get what they were trying to do, but I just could not give a shit about uh, you know um, either of them really. Yeah. The entire the entire story was um And you I love you man and you Dude don't make me regret this. I will do that. But yeah, so cover five. The ending was good. The ending was actually pretty great. Yeah, the ending was good. It's just the the, uh, the problem was that it was like for ninety percent of it it was an idiot plot. Then a Deus Ex Machina, then the thing that basically fi should have happened from the beginning of let's actually talk about this. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. Are we talking about Crisis Core or Soul Calibur? Yes. Uh, sort of both, really, because we're talking about two ba big ass disappointments. Yep. So. I mean, I like Soul Cal 4, even with oh, the yeah. stupidity of the uh, Star Wars characters. Yeah. <laughs> Or I loved how stupid they were, but... Oh, uh, uh, I I forgot there was a... Yeah, yeah, so you know what? Actually, Soul Calibur V is a perfect thing to compare this to, because it, it also starts out strong and it ends strong. Yep. Yeah, and everything in, in between is fucking... Actually, yeah, because, oh. like, it has those great CG cutscenes at the yeah. beginning and the end. Yeah, and where it's those half half nightmare. Yeah. yeah, and then it's those... Utterly half-assed uh, stills the entire rest of the way. I kind of liked those, to be honest, as far I, as like, the, the construction of them. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be like complaining if they were well done stills, but they were like literally sketch as hell. Like, yeah, well, I don't know. I was kind of impressed with the uh, how they managed to convey uh, motion and everything with them, but some of them yeah. were good. I'm just sort of like. So a, a, a lot of times, several of them were just, like, I don't know, it was just sort of, a lot of them were, it, it just felt like using uh, the sketches to avoid having to animate something, even if it could be done entirely in-engine. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a valid point. Yeah. Yeah. So to bring it back to Crisis Core, though, um, I will say, Zach, I care I care more about him than either, well, especially that main schmuck from the other game that we were just talking about. Yeah, um, Petropolis? Anyways, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the name. 
Oh, one of their first um, side missions. Technically, it's basic. Very cool. Yeah. Side mission. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing I will say is that it's a very interesting uh, mix of actual RPG turn base and um, action RPG here. Mm hmm. Because every time you press the button, it isn't immediate. It actually is, technically speaking, an ATB system. Yeah. And all uh, things happen in a turn order. Like, if an enemy is doing an attack, you have to wait for it to end but before your attack goes off. But while you're waiting, you can still move around and adjust and dodge their attacks. It, it, I mean, it's... I it's know. weird, but it's actually kind of compelling. I, uh, you know... I don't know. Not for me. I, I didn't like that either. I mean, I, I got irritated with it too after a while, but it was just sort of a an interesting concept that had they polished it a little bit more, might have been uh, pretty pretty damn good. Oh, well, had they made it more like I don't know, Birth by Sleep. Yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> that I think, was I think cool. Birth by Sleep is one of the best uh, action RPG systems that they've made. Period. So. Yeah. It was, um, it was genuinely good. Yeah. Um. Though I do, I do like the the way thirteen and thirteen two did it, but that's more RPG action because you don't have direct control over position. I do yeah. wish you had direct control over each person, but that's still just my grousing. Um, they improved that in two and made it irrelevant in three. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we had that conversation, but yeah. the lightning but, returns this combat system is where it should have started. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I think if they kept going with this battle system, if they improved it, we could get a really, really solid game out of it. I'm just, you know, at the moment it's nearly there, but not quite. Um, that describes half of this game. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Make him gulp up around every single time. Zach's favorite pastime is making Kunzel turn 90 degrees. Mm. I could stare at that man, shift to the right and left <laughs> all day. I think at this point, Pixel was... Trolling. There we go. Oh, I mean, I, I, I guess I can... I guess I have to give... Um... Versus 4 the... Acknowledgement that as PSP games go, it's... One of the... Better ones. That wasn't a port of something else already. Yeah. Because there's oh. some great games on the PSP, it's just that they all started on another system. Oh yeah, yeah. If we're if we're getting yeah. if we're gonna get, we break it down like that, then then the the port uh, the compilation port that included Mutant League Football was better than this, but <laughs> that's unfair. <laughs> that's Mutant League Football. Well, well likewise, yeah. Tales of Eternia. Mm. By the way, still love that goddamn game. Anyways, first, is it? No. Just so, to okay. become a hero. Um, I actually wanted to talk about uh, Lazard for a second. He's a weird character. Hmm, blind guy oh, in a position of power. Yeah. In yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're done with this episode.